I've been watching and involved in developments in Northern Ireland, political developments in Northern Ireland for a very long time and uh, sometimes it seems that very little changes. And then from time to time there are events or developments that seem to me to mark a very considerable development. And I think the Brexit process uh, has really been a kind of Rubicon um, because since the 1920s onwards, Unionists, Protestant Unionist people and politicians in Northern Ireland felt that they could depend not just on their own numbers, though that was very important, but also on the British government, particularly the Conservative Party, to protect their interests in a substantial way. That's not to say that they would always go along with, with Unionist uh, interests, but for much of the time they left Unionists to run Northern Ireland themselves, and when they did have to intervene, uh, they still took Unionists extremely seriously. But in the Brexit process, something has begun to change quite dramatically. First of all, it's becoming clearer that Unionists no longer have the majority themselves. Partly this is because of demographic changes, but partly it's because Northern Ireland has begun to change in its attitudes, and so has the Republic of Ireland. It was always the case that the vast majority of people were either from a Protestant Unionist or Catholic Nationalist background, and then there was a a relatively modest group of, of people in the broad centre. But in recent times and in recent elections, it's become increasingly clear that there are now three cohorts. There is a Protestant Unionist cohort and a Catholic Nationalist and sometimes Republican cohort. The first getting gradually smaller, the second getting gradually bigger. And then there's been this third cohort of relatively young you might call them metropolitans or cosmopolitans, young people who really don't think that much about the old fights and the old disagreements, don't have the same kind of identification with Protestant Unionism or Catholic Nationalism, are much more European, much more internationalist, much more liberal in their uh, perspectives, very impatient with the old struggles and wanting to move forward in a different way. But at the same time, uh, politics and society in the South have changed really quite dramatically too, so that there's not the same kind of fear in the North about the domination of the Catholic Church or particular aspects of culture in the South. So that's meant a change in attitudes North and South within the island of Ireland, with the Unionist majority getting smaller and smaller. But the Brexit process added in something else. For quite some time it appeared that a significant minority in the Conservative Party, uh, the European Research Group was a, a, a particular cluster, people who were pro-Brexit but were very conservative and would have described themselves as very conservative and unionist, that is to say they very much concerned about the whole of the United Kingdom wanting to keep England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland together for the foreseeable future. And indeed, Unionists in the North believed that these people uh, would hold out for their interests. They were, after all, Unionists too. However, it's become clear that that isn't so. Not only have many Scots become more nationalistic, many Irish people in, in Northern Ireland become more nationalistic, but many English people have become more nationalistic too. And when it comes to a question of what is in the interests of England, the interests of Scotland or Wales or Northern Ireland, and particularly the interests of Northern Ireland, go down the scale. And of course, when there has been a debate with the European Union about what kind of relationship there might be if Brexit were to go ahead, it's become clear that the interests of England trump all the other interests. And the Unionists of Northern Ireland were shocked to discover that what happened in the 1985 agreement when Margaret Thatcher signed up for something they didn't like was really only the presaging 
of a fundamental change in attitudes by English people to Northern Ireland. Tired of the troubles, tired of the endless disputes and difficulties, increasingly distanced from attitudes, culture and politics that felt alien, distant. Those changes, it seems to me, are not only dramatic, but irreversible. And they tell us something about the likely trajectory towards a united Ireland, not just in future generations, but already in this generation.